So you want to know what watercolor materials to buy and how to use them? Well, stay tuned. You found the right channel. Well, if you're a beginner, start at the beginning, and then you're going to be purchasing brand new materials. If you are uh, somewhat of an intermediate, been painting for two or three years in that range, this video is intended for you as well because it's going to maybe clarify thoughts you have or give you some new concepts and ideas as how to handle watercolor paint, which ones you might want to use. A little word of advice. If you haven't already <coughs> excuse me, purchased your pigments or any of the watercolor uh, materials, when you walk into that candy store, they call it a, an art supply store, don't buy everything you need. You don't need all of it. I'm going to try to clarify some of that right here in our discussion and when I do a few demo techniques for you in just a moment. Okay, let's start with watercolor. There are two kinds of watercolor, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Student grade paints and uh, professional arts grade paints. And uh, why? Well, what's the difference? The difference is student grade paint has much less pigment in it than professional paints. And student grade paints have more filler in it than professional artist grade paints. That's why you see such a difference in price. Pigment is expensive. So the more pigment in a mix, the more expensive it's going to be. And professional grade paints provides that more pigment. You don't use as much paint. So you can, again, see the value at that particular point. OK. I have here the student grade paints that I would recommend to you. There are three that I would recommend. There are more, but this particular sheet displays Van Gogh made by Royal Talons as Cotman made by Winsor Newton and Academy made by Grumbacher. For the sake of not having to do all three as an example, I'm going to show you the colors I'm going to recommend to you if you haven't already purchased them. This is student grade. If you've purchased student grade, get these particular colors in your repertoire because I'm going to recommend that's the only ones you use for a while until you get used to color mixing. A very limited palette when you're just beginning, in my humble opinion, is critical to you in terms of which color should you use when you look at your subject matter and it is much easier to mix and remember what you mixed. And it gives harmony to a painting when you're using simpler colors. Okay, <clears throat> the same holds true if you're using professional pigments. If you're a beginner or, as I mentioned earlier, if you've been painting for two or three years and you went out and bought three palettes full of colors, you're going to be very confused. So you need this video to be able to take a couple of steps back and reevaluate where you're headed with this. Believe me, this will help you down the road a tremendous amount. Let's go to watercolor pigments, the professional grade. Okay, these are 10 professional artist grade watercolor pigments. I have used all 10 and they're all good. Winsor Newton, M. Graham, Daniel Smith, Holbein, Schmeke, Mission Goal, QOR, Da Vinci, Rembrandt, American Journey. They're all good. Do I have preferences? Yes, I do. And I'll go through those in a little while. But if you wind up with any one of these, or a few of those, you're going to be doing very well. They're extremely good. If you're going to use professional pigments, as an example for them, I'm using M. Graham watercolor on my chart. And I do use M. Graham pretty consistently, along with two or three of the other ones pretty consistently. However, I still use most of the paints that you saw, the manufacturers of those paints. 
you'll see these are the same basic colors I'm recommending. A red, a yellow, and a blue, a green, and burnt sienna, and burnt umber. Same thing. These are the M. Graham outstanding light fast colors. The other professional paints are the same. I've got three primaries, a one red, one yellow, and one blue. Sort of a mid-brood, maybe warmer than cooler, but a mid-brood green and a burnt sienna or burnt umber. Now, if you've already purchased watercolor and you, you're in that intermediate range, you can use instead of burnt sienna, a transparent red iron oxide, and instead of burnt umber, a transparent brown iron oxide. And, and I can't find this in every manufacturer. The one I found I like the most is Rembrandt in this particular piece, okay? And, and try those in lieu of these two. But this gets you down to a basic six. I'm gonna show you how to mix some of those right now. How to approach mixing, okay? I'm often asked, do I use black watercolor paint? Well, I have, I have. But it's much, much better if I mix it myself. And here's why. It'll be the same reason for you. Let me open this up a little bit so you can see all of my... When you're doing a painting and you mix your blacks or your darks, because you may not necessarily want black, darks, mid-tone values, and light values. If you mix your darks from the pigments you're using for that particular painting, your harmony is going to be better in your completed painting. If you use a black out of a tube when you want a dark mixed with any other color, first of all, it's going to get that other color kind of chalky down and dull, and it's going to stand out like a sore thumb, and that's not what you want. So let's take a look at mixing a few blacks. All right, here's a clean sheet of paper. Now I'm gonna go from this, just a plain old color wheel, and if you don't have one, you need to get one. Either this size, they make them in the circular shape, big ones, little ones, but you need to get one and really kind of take the time, take a couple hours to sit back, read them, and analyze them. The three primary colors, and that's all the good Lord made, Everything else is a spring off of those three colors. And this will show you, for instance, blue and yellow. And if you mix them 50-50, you're going to get a green. If you have more blue than yellow, you're going to get a blue green. If you have more yellow than blue, you're going to get a yellow green. That's the way it works. Then from here, if you mix it with the runoffs, or the, should say the tertiary colors off of the primaries and secondaries, I mean, it's endless what you can mix. You can mix everything there is out there with those three colors. Okay? So let's take a look then. We're going to jump right in at black. Now, I'm using Arches, A-R-C-H-E-S, watercolor paper. It's a professional paper and I highly recommend you do not buy cheap paper and do not paint on cheap paper. Absolutely professional watercolor paper and let me tell you, yes, you're going to pay more for it. But you can use student grade brushes, student grade paint and save that money and spend it on your watercolor paper because if you don't, you're going to be awfully disappointed. You're not going to get the results from cheap paper that you will from professional 100% cotton rag sized watercolor paper. Okay, You're not going to use a full 22 by 30 sheet initially anyway. You're going to be cutting it up into small pieces. So please use professional watercolor paper. I will be covering that in one of our next videos along with brushes as to which brushes are good bargains, which ones do you really need, the same as pigments. Here's two, actually here's three brushes that I would recommend right up front that you use. Here they are. I have a number eight round, 
I have a number six round and I have a half inch flat brush right there. You're going to use these along the line all the time. So you just can get them right up front and use these when you're practicing. Yes, I said practicing. Practice makes perfect. If you want to be a great golfer, you're going to go hit golf balls, you know. And anyway, you better get this good paper and get at least these three brushes. Student grade, sure. All synthetic. All three of these are synthetic. You don't need Kolininsky Sable. You may want it down the road if you decide you're going to really want to continue with watercolor thing. All right. I'm going to take, first of all, the number eight. I'm going to show you some things about mixing, first of all, black. People, uh, again, they, they want to use black out of a tube. I don't recommend it at all. I truly don't. Let's take a look right here. And I imagine you can see those pretty good. Yeah, these are the basic uh, starter colors and I just recommend it to you either in student grade or in uh, professional artist grade. I'm going to take, first of all, red. I'm going to take my Lizard and Crimson Red. Incidentally, there are really two ways to mix paint. You can mix paint in the palette or you can mix paint on the paper. They both work. Depends on what you're trying to do. Okay, I'm going to get some red. Now that I got the red, I'm going to clear my brush. And I'm going to get some of that green. This case is sap green. Okay, now you can see that pretty clearly on, on the camera. I'm going to do it on the paper. As you saw in the color wheel, red here, red and green, primary complement. If you put equal amounts, you're going to get to a darker color. Depending upon which red and which green you use, it's going to either be black or gray. Let's give it a shot. Okay, here's some red. I'm going to put it right here. And this happens to be permanent alizarin crimson. By the way, my board is at a 30 degree angle. I'm used to painting it that way. For this illustration, I'm going to just make it perfectly level. Clean my brush, and I'm going to get some of that green. And I'm going to throw the green in. Now, because green is a direct complement of red, look what it does to it. Starts turning it a darker color. Well, let's get some real heavy pigment in here. I just put a whole bunch of heavy red. Okay, I've got kind of a greenish maroon looking color. However, I'm going to put some more green. This is the same as anything you've done before. If you mix it evenly, you get a muddy looking dark. If you use more green, you got a green dark. And if you use more red, you got a red dark. Let's see if I can get it close to 50-50. And then I can show you at that point what your basic dark is going to be. And here it is. That's a very dark tone. Now, if you're using these two colors or a lot of green and you're going to want to tone that green down like in a landscape, you would use red to do that. Okay, can you use burnt sienna or burnt oak? Yes, you can. And if you use a kind that's kind of semi-opaque, you might get a little dullness to it. But these are both transparent colors and you're going to get the actual true color. So that's the red and green, just a compliment there. Let's use another compliment. Let me get this. Here's blue. Its complement is orange. Well, what makes up orange? Yellow and red. 
Well, guess what? If you're going to use orange to mix with the blue because it's a complement to blue, you're going to use orange. It's got red and yellow in it. So what are you doing? You're actually mixing all three primaries. It's the same all the way around. If you're trying to get the same thing with green, green is yellow and blue, and you're mixing it with red, you're using all primaries. Yellow, you're going to get purple, it's red and blue, you're using all primaries. So it's just a matter of how much of which color you put in to achieve what value and what color you're looking for. So let's do that. Let's take blue, get some of this ultramarine blue right here. And I want you to practice this. I mean, you need to be hands-on to be able to understand and appreciate what you're going to get. You can't just read it in the book. You can't just watch me and say, okay, I got it. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. That's all there is to it. Okay, now I've got blue right there. But I don't have orange. I could get orange out of it too. Why? I can make it. I've got red and I've got yellow. Well, I've got some red right here. So I'm going to take and I'm going to use this yellow. I'm sorry, the Hansa Yellow Deep, which is a middle grade yellow. It can be used as a neutral or it can be used as a warm. Got a little, little red tint to it. Well, let's just get the orange first before we do anything else. Now, I've got an orange there, but it's a little deep orange. Let's add a little more yellow and get it down to a different yellow. I'm sorry, a different orange. Okay, there we go. So now we have orange and blue. So let's take some of the blue, make sure we've got some solid pigment. And we're going to put the blue here. Bunch of blue. You should actually start with the lighter color first. It works better. I'm going to start this way. And I'm going to start deepening down. Now, if I don't think this is dark enough, guess what I would do? Yeah, you're right. I would turn around and get a little more red. and a little more yellow. There it is. There's orange. Now, but that's not dark. Not yet. And then a little more blue. There you go. And look what you got. And if I add just a little bit more blue, Got a dark. It happens to be a cool dark versus a warm dark. Now you can do the other one as well. That's blue and yellow. It's red and green. Okay. Blue and yellow. Red and green. Um, you can do just take the three primaries. I'm going to do it in the palette. Red. Yellow. You will have to use more yellow than any of the three primaries. There's an obvious reason. It's much lighter. Okay. And then I'm going to pick up some blue. Okay. A little more blue, and that's ultramarine blue. Now, which shade do I want the most out of here? Here's one, sort of a neutral, almost a light yellowish tone in it. So I'll put some more blue. Got a tinge of green in it. Well, obviously we've got yellow and blue in there. Put a little bit more blue, and look at this dark. 
Okay. If I put a little more red in there, this is really going to deepen it. That's because I don't have enough of the other colors, so I'm going to put a little more yellow. And I'm going to put a little more blue. I put a little bit too much red just now. And this is the actual color I'm going to get. I'm going to get a deep color. Okay? You can see where the red is really controlling everything. All right. So that's basically getting to a darker color. Now let me show you the way I would get to it using <clears throat> Burn Umber and Ultramarine Blue and Burn Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to get some of my uh, basically Burn Umber. is and some of my ultramarine blue not quite 50 50 a little bit too much blue a little bit more of the burn on the color that's one dark and I can make I have it watered down just a hair to be able to make it flow a little bit better but I could go ahead, now it's a little bit darker, it's got that blue cast to it, and all I have to do is just add a little bit of the burn number in there, and I'm going to get that cast back, a little darker cast, if I didn't add too much of it. Well, there's one dark, and that's going to be a cooler dark than with the burnt sienna, obviously. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue. This is no different than mixing it with oils or acrylics. So watercolor is a little more difficult to control. Believe me when I tell you that. But it's a fun medium to use. Okay, here we go. Get a little tone value in there with that. A little more blue. And I'm going to wind up with this particular color, which is a deep gray. Okay. So there you are. That's how to mix it. Depending, you can make this much darker. All you got to do is add one color or the other, and you will be right there. So that's how to get yourself started. And you need to really be practicing these techniques in order to get a little better, in fact, a lot better with it before you start trying to paint a complete painting. If you just take off and start trying to paint a complete painting without knowing anything about colors, you'd be really lucky if it comes out halfway decent and clashes color-wise, okay? So don't take that chance, and you ought to yourself to give yourself a fair try when it comes to the materials you're using, which is what we're talking about right now. Do not skimp on watercolor paper. Spend those few extra dollars and get professional color. Okay? Hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please consider clicking on the subscribe button down below, and also on the like button. We really would appreciate that, and that will help you get notification on our future videos coming up. Till then, thank you, and take care.